Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1995's Welcome to the Dollhouse. Before we get started, if you want to reach out to me or Corey and follow us on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Corey underscore Idol. And also, I'll just make another quick mention. Uh, we are, again, getting super close to the thousand sub mark. So if you have any questions, we're going to do the special show that uh, a couple of people have requested. Uh, in the comments below, ask us some questions. We'll pretty much answer anything. Mm -hmm. um, or you can hit us up on Twitter and you can send us questions there. So fingers, fingers crossed. Swat us on Twitter. Here's the cast of Welcome to the Dowell House. This film stars Heather Matarazzo as Dawn Wiener, Christina Bricado as Cookie, Toria Davis as Lolita, Eric Mabius as Steve Rogers, and Brendan Sexton III as Brandon McCarthy. Let's dive into this movie. Uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse was a uh, request via mm -hmm. PayPal, so we'll try to do it justice and hopefully make some people laugh along the way. Yeah, I um, full disclosure, I was never a seventh grade girl. So if we miss some of the relatable characteristics here, sorry, <laughs> just I was never that. Yes. Uh, however, I did find myself relating an awful lot to her character because like her, I wasn't liked very much by some people. Now, it was for <laughs> different reasons. I was it was funny when I was describing this and it being able to relate to the bulliness. It's yeah. like I was bullied, but it's because. I kept taking people's girlfriends and not because I was a uggo. So oh. that, this that's, where guy. The, that's where the difference was. All right, Fonzie. <clears throat> well, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> hey. I didn't relate for the simple fact that I really didn't get picked on a lot until high school hit and everybody yeah. grew three feet and I was still like four foot two. So that was a thing. Um, and for the and I was there was a lot of homophobic slurs thrown at me oh, like the, oh, yeah. in high school. So I did relate to that. But let's dive into this because the movie opens with Dawn in the junior high cafeteria looking for a place to eat lunch. And you get the typical, you know, lunchtime movie trope. I can't find a place to sit. Nobody likes me. And so they've they've already set up that she's unpopular. She sits down and immediately gets picked on by some cheerleader bitches. And you get some some of the homophobic slurs thrown out here. And then Dawn sees Troy getting jumped by some other homophobes in the hallway. Between these two scenes, apparently this was at like the Jerry Falwell junior high. Like, I don't I didn't even know what the fuck was going on. Like growing up in the 90s, you heard a lot of that, right? Oh, I can but, confirm that that was a go to <laughs> for many, many a bully. Yes. With, but with the uh, gay slips. There was an overabundance in this movie. Yo, it's like the first, like, five or six lines that are uttered by people. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. And here's, the th here's where I think this was so accurate, and I'm not really giving it too much flack. Yeah. Is because as kids, that's what you do. I imagine kids today are saying some wild shit. You were right. So yeah. them just kind of spouting off stuff, I totally get it. Oh, no. Especially it's, it's... because it totally happened to me. Yeah, it's I mean, it's accurate. It's, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. We then get a glimpse of Dawn at home and she doesn't have the best home life either. School sucks. Her home life sucks. Her mom is a goddamn cunt on wheels. And Whoa, she's the worst. <laughs> and can we can we just throw this out there? You don't you kind of see it here with like, uh, you know, in her in the first couple of scenes of her at home, but 
Can her parents be in the most loveless marriage of all time? Oh, that is just, that is just, um, that guy, like everybody thinks later on he has a nervous breakdown, FYI. It's not because of what's happening in those scenes. Yes. It's because of this marriage. And he's just a broken down. He's just like, I'm fucking stuck. He's the guy that just like forks his mashed potatoes over and over and over (laughs) without eating anything. We then cut back to school. Dawn rats out Brandon for trying to cheat off of her on a test. And the teacher keeps both her and Brandon after school. I, I don't I don't know about you, but like the teacher here a is is a complete asshole and no they're outside of dawn there really isn't another likable character in this fucking film like you know no um what's his face captain america steve rogers is the only one because he actually like treats her okay for the most part yes Yes. When they're when they're just kind of alone and talking, he treats her like you should treat a little girl that has a crush on you. Yeah. Just no, kind of absolutely. nice and respectful and talking, but not going over the top. And I mean, look, I'd be remiss if I didn't do this. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi, Takashi69. Uncle Corey here. You clearly watched this movie and thought it was cool to rat. It is not. Don't be a fucking rat. I don't care if you like the person, if you don't like the person, if they're picking on you, don't be a fucking rat. Yeah. I don't care. You don't tattle. Period. Yes. And, and as, as much as the teacher is an asshole here for keeping both of them, um, I, I totally concur. Like, just let him try to cheat. If he gets in trouble, he gets in trouble. Like, fuck that kid. Yeah. The, the, the part that pissed me off here with the teacher wasn't that she punished Dawn too, because Dawn totally deserved it. But then she lectures Dawn about dignity and makes her have a fucking like write a hundred word essay. Here's a hot tip, kids. This isn't a PSA, but a hot tip. Your teacher cannot flunk you for writing a made up assignment for not writing a made up assignment. I never once wrote one of those fucking papers. Are you out of your fucking mind? That's insane. After class, Dawn goes to the bathroom and she sees Lolita, who apparently likes Brandon or maybe they dated or or some shit. But she sees her in the bathroom and Lolita forces her to take a shit while she watches. Corey's life lessons. Hi, bullies. (laughs) Uncle Corey here. Uh, That's not being a bully or tough or embarrassed. You're weird. You're you have fucking a, nasty. We don't kink shame, but this is old. This is early poop fetish signs. <laughs> you need to chill with that shit because you want to talk about assault. Yeah, brother, do not force somebody to fucking make in front of you. That's I never think, gonna be okay. I think Lolita was behind the two girls one cup epidemic that swept America. <laughs> After school, Don and Brandon retake their test with this teacher. She gets a D on it, and then she's berated by her teacher who makes her write, you know, this essay or whatever because she's an old wretched whore. But back at home, Don gets yelled at some more by her mother, and she's forced to sit at the dinner table all night because she won't say she loves her sister. And fuck you yeah, know, Don. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know why she won't say she loves her sister? Because her sister's a fucking asshole, too. Her yeah. sister's an asshole. Her brother's an asshole. Her mother's an asshole. And her dad is just kind of there in flesh. Like, he's not present. <laughs> no, the dad doesn't give a shit. The dad checked out years ago. Oh, yeah. Years ago. Uh, he just doesn't have enough money to actually go out for cigarettes and never come back. Because you know <laughs> mom's going to hit him for that alimony. You're right again. The brother, I really don't have a problem with because he is he is the atypical bro- older brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he does talk to Don later. She goes to him with questions. She's the or he's the only one that she really seems comfortable with talking to. Yes. Throughout this movie. So him, I kind of give a break to Missy, the little sister. Yeah. Get ready to get knocked up at 14. Who are because <laughs> you're cruising that way. I met girls like you. 
And because you're fucking, what, six, you think I'm going to take it easy on you? Fuck you, you manipulative little <laughs> sociopath. You're a well, fucking nut job. And she you are everything. Going, you are going to get knocked up by the quarterback who ends up working at fucking Jiffy Lube. And, and you ha- hate your life. <laughs> and you're going to have the same relationship that your parents have. Exactly. Only you can't leave. Not because you don't make enough money because the strip club pays very well. Mm-hmm. It's because you have genital warts and nobody wants that. I, uh, I hated Missy with a fucking passion. So did I. So the next day, Dawn sees her brother's band practicing in the garage with a new lead singer, Steve Rogers. <laughs> and she goes out to see and is immediately smitten with Steve. Yeah, well, and, and can you really blame her? Because nope, you got fucking fat Armando behind the drums. <laughs> <laughs> You got me playing the fucking flute and some other jerk off just kind of hanging out playing the keyboards. And then this guy walks in who actually looks like an adult male in a 16 or 17 year old's body. (laughs) Yes. I don't blame her at all. I was a little smitten given the rest of this cast. I'm not going to lie. He was gorgeous. Out of the whole cast. (laughs) He could sling that D. (laughs) So the next day at school during an assembly while she's getting picked on and They're throwing paper and shit at her. Dawn accidentally hits a teacher in the eye with a spitball. And she gets suspended for three days. Dawn's parents come in and they react as poorly as you possibly can act. And the the problem, I have one major problem. I'm going to do a quick don't do that. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, parents out there. When you get called into the principal's office, I, I... as a parent, I've been called in a few times. Um, just defend your kid. Just even, if, listen, if he gets in trouble or she gets in trouble for something crazy, hits a teacher in the eye with a spitball. Fine. That's cool. Hey, bad, bad boy, bad girl. Don't do that. But when your child says, I was just defending myself. Don't look at her or him and go, who told you to do that? Don't ever do that. Go fuck yourself, Mrs. So-and-so. If I'm the principal, I'm like, y'all need to get the fuck out. Don, you can stay in school. We obviously know why you're quiet and fucked up, because your parents are a fucking goddamn hot mess. Yep. And he kind of gives that look, too, when the mom says, who told you to defend yourself? Like, he kind of gives that look, and you think for a second he's going to take it easier, but he doesn't. No. Because... Everybody hates this fucking girl for some reason. Yes. And and I want to know in the comments if this happened more to you troublemaking girls out there. Because principals, whether I was alone, definitely not when I was with my parents in a, in a conference like that. Did a principal ever raise their voice to me? Ever. No. No, and I'll I'll be never spoken to like that. I'll be honest. I did some heinous shit as a kid. Yeah, dude. And never once did the principal ever raise their voice at me. No, never. And never when my parents, like my, they never even came close to something disrespectful. It was all facts when your parents are in the room. Absolutely. Don then talks to her brother about Steve Rogers He explains to her that basically Steve will bang anything that moves. And I guess it doesn't matter how old they are either, because he's like, hey, you know, this girl, Ginger. And she's like, yeah, she was in my gym class. And he's like, oh, yeah, he totally banged her. And they're like juniors, I think. Yeah, well, you could tell that with their... Their understanding of some of these words, yes, either one are way off base or two, they are just kids and being extraordinarily hyperbolic with everything they're saying. Yes. Because the girl later says when Dawn talks to her that like we finger fucked a couple of times, which by the way, is totally the new term I'm using from here on out. Yes. But she says this and obviously it's like, oh, so they didn't bang. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's just kind of like, if you go to third base, you win all the way. If you grab the tit, you know what I mean? Like, it's just this 
crazy exaggerations that kids do. And I remember yeah. that. But can we can we just address, okay, one more, don't do that. Don't do that, it's not good for you. Hi, guys. I mean, I guess, or girls out there. Um, if you're like a junior, senior, don't finger fuck an eighth grader. That's not oh, cool. Yeah. No. <laughs> which, which, by the way, because she goes to Ginger and says, like, that's a quick don't do that. Um, I didn't think it needed to be mentioned, but figured I'd throw it out there because she goes to Ginger and she's like, hey, I like Steve. You know, do you think I got a shot? She's like, oh, we he finger we finger fucked. And I was like, oh, she looks much older than Dawn. But yes. Dawn literally said we were in the same gym class together. So I would assume they're in the same grade. And I if, was like, if not just a year older. Yeah, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> that's yeah. that's not cool yeah the the rule of thumb i always had was one grade lower and once you graduate high school unless it's a long-term relationship no grades lower that's fair that's a fair rule steve then shows up while dawn's brother's out she invites mm-hmm. him in to wait for her brother she fixes him like some fish sticks and whatever and then sits with him on the couch for a second she then starts to play the piano for him. To demonstrate how good her fingers are. You want to see my fingers? Which, yes. again, she doesn't understand finger fucking, but awesome tactic. <laughs> uh, no, fucking it's... brilliant tactic. And if you're uh, a nerdy little fucking <laughs> piano player and, like, your, your older sister's person, is, friend is coming over yeah. or whatever you're attracted to is coming over that you're into... And you want to demonstrate your talents like that? Oh, my God. It's brilliant. Steve then drops his high school ID. He, like, loses it on the couch. She horks it real quick and then builds a shrine to Steve with his high school ID in it. And again, this chick is this chick is hitting puberty (laughs) so strong. I have nothing but respect for it. Yeah, no, she she didn't like like hit the brick wall and like, or just like slow roll it. She was just like, like she exploded through the goddamn thing. Yeah. Like her hormone monster is Murray. If you don't get out of here right now, we're going to Jackson Pollock all over your pants. So the next day, Steve quits the band after practice because Don's brother is being a persnickety douche. And yeah. Steve, Steve is just a sensitive prick. And Don is heartbroken about the whole thing. Cause Steve storms off and, it's a whole to do. And I think one of the cutest scenes for me is her dancing on the hood of the car, like a fucking sixties yeah. go-go dancer. <laughs> yes. I, I was just, that was adorable. Love that scene. Yeah. And then we cut back to school and Brandon, the psycho who's been bothering Dawn during this whole movie threatens to rape her after school and then proceeds to follow her menacingly throughout the day. I had to reconcile this in my head by they don't understand the words they're using. Yes. At absolutely. All. Absolutely. He has no idea what that word means. Yep. Yeah. So that's again, that's kind of where I was just like, all right, but I'm not going to lie to you. The first couple minutes, I, I literally said out loud, if he rapes this bitch, I'm turning this fucking movie off. <laughs> I did the same thing. Like, Three o'clock hits and Dawn quickly tries to leave the school. Brandon gets to her, pins her to the wall, tells her to strip, but she gets away because the janitor comes out to take the trash out to the dumpster. And the janitor just kind of throws the trash away and is like, hmm, that was peculiar. Little girl (laughs) ran away. That kid just pocketed a knife. Oh, well, fuck it. Time to go clean up the barf. No, he's going to go smoke a J out back. (laughs) (laughs) Boy, he could have got that off of Brandon after he beat the shit out of him. Exactly. But back at home, Brandon then calls Dawn and threatens to rape her again after school the next day. So the next day, Dawn meets Brandon outside after school. This is when I got it. When he just when she just shows up, I'm like, they have no idea what this word means. Yes. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Because, yeah, so the the next day, Don meets Brandon outside of the school, and he takes her to, like, this abandoned building, and they at talk. At knife point. Yeah, at knife point. And they talk while he smokes, 
and he then kisses her and tells her he's not going to rape her and also tells her not to tell anyone that they kissed. Well, right. And this was this was an interesting moment because he reveals like the reason he got so mad at her was because she called him the R word and he wasn't and his brother actually looked like he has like Down syndrome. And he actually he actually says, yeah, he actually tells her while they're talking that his brother has downs and that's. You you just kind of infer like, okay that's why I'm so upset. That's why you lost your fucking mind. Right. Yeah. So I I did like that. I liked seeing him just kind of open up because really that's what most bullies are. They're just scared little pussies that need somebody to talk to. Yeah. And and nine times out of ten, their home life is fucking oh. garbage, which we Dog see shit. later. We see later in the movie. Um, and they're just taking out their frustrations and they they don't they don't have what they call the social skills um, because their home life is such a fucking dumpster fire that they don't know how to interact with other people outside of me strong, you weak. I, t- you know, big bank, take little bank. Like that's, the, that's their, that's their mentality. You were right. Thank you for the hood translation. Now I understand. <laughs> Ice cube taught me a lot. <laughs> There's more family drama at the dinner table. Again, Dawn's mom is being her Karen ass self about setting up their backyard party for her and her husband's 18th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. A, your husband doesn't care. He doesn't even want to be married, let alone celebrate 18 years of lost life with you. Yeah. Here's Um, what's funny. You and him both think it's 18 years, but it's actually 20th anniversary. (laughs) (laughs) But let's, let's face facts. Poor. Don't have a backyard fucking party. Just invite people over to the house. Oh, you got to take down the the fucking clubhouse out back because we don't have enough room. Fine. Then have everybody inside. You got a deck. Set up some chairs. Dude, this mother in in this whole scene and because Dawn says like, oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm this is my line in the sand. I'm not taking down the clubhouse. She's like, cool, bitch. You don't get any fucking cake for dessert. I will take that cake and smush it in your face. By the way, the way that cake looked, you're all going to have raging diarrhea <laughs> in about three hours. That cake looked yes. like a gelatinous mess. Uh, they were like, where'd you Ugh. get it? She's like, I bought it at the grocery store. I was like, Ugh, bitch, that's why you? you don't go to Aldi. <laughs> that cake's old as fuck, dog. She didn't even buy Entenmann's. She bought like Bentonins. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit they sell at Aldi's. With chocolate flavored icing. So at the anniversary party, Dawn is heartbroken again as Steve is, I guess, banging some chick in their garage after their gig at the anniversary party. And he basically calls her just a dumb kid because she wants him to join her clubhouse. Special people's club. And he lets her know what that means on the side. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi, cool guys. Uncle Corey here. Just because your fucking piece of ass is next to you and the little girl that you've engaged like an adult this whole fucking time asks yeah. you to be a part of her club, just say yes. Don't try <laughs> and be cool. You're yeah. a fucking douchebag for doing yeah. that. I this hated is... that. This Don't, was the... Like, and by the way, the, that girl behind you that you're boning out, she might actually think it's cooler if you treat the kid with some kind of, you know, respect yeah. instead of trying to make her feel like a fucking idiot. Yeah, exactly. And on, like man. this, I was I was I was kind of pissed at this scene. I was just like, oh, dude, you've been like a decent person yeah. this whole time. And then like now you're just like, dude, fuck this band. I quit. I'm going to New York to, to apparently be like a guitar player on the subway because that's what he's going to end up doing. Um, right. Which in and, fairness, look, I'll, I give him all the credit in the world. Cause when you critique me, as you've seen in the comments, I get pissed too. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck this show. I'm moving to New York. So I get, I get where he's coming from there. Yeah. This spot is bullshit. After the party, the family sits together and watches the video 
of the party they were just at. And Don's sister, you know, we see the scene of Don's sister pushing her into the kiddie pool and they all find it hilarious. And she obviously does not. And later that night, Don takes the, the videotape and smashes it. Dude, Don is a fucking gangster. Dude, she's... I, by, I The respect of Don's arc here yes. into full-on psychopath yeah. is fantastic. And I am into it. No, I love it. I love it. When she did that, I was like, yeah, fuck those people. And by the way, here's another don't do that. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, parents, family members, cousins, whatever. If you're at a party, and I know this used to be a thing more than it is now, um, but if you're taking video at a, at a party, a graduation, an anniversary, just pocket it for the day. Watch it a week later. You were just, you all experienced it. You don't have to watch the video that evening. And no. go, remember, remember when, you remember that? Yeah, it happened two hours ago. What the fuck are we watching this for? Right? And now people want to, le- these same people want to lecture pe- kids today about staring at their phones. <laughs> Motherfucker, you're watching something that was literally a memory. You can re- you can recite what happened in the event you're watching on TV. That's insane. You can literally have Alzheimer's and still remember <laughs> the party. Okay? <laughs> Alexa, play the anniversary party. Alexa, what is love? So Don, stupid. I yeah. hate her parents and mainly her mom. Like I actually pity her dad. Her mom yeah. is what I imagine my life would have been if I was married to my first wife still. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I concur. Just three shit ass kids and a fucking wife I can't stand and just yep. stabbing the fucking mashed potatoes, wishing <laughs> it was one of her main organs. <laughs> looking at a rope in the garage going, <coughs> I could tie a tight enough knot. I know I could tie a tight <laughs> enough knot. <laughs> the next day or like two days later, her mom has to go pick up her dad. And she tells Dawn that like, hey, I left a note in there. Missy's got to go to ballet class or whatever. She needs a ride afterwards because we're not going to be able to pick her up. Dawn then purposefully doesn't tell her little sister that she needs a ride after ballet, and her sister gets abducted. Corey's Life Lessons! Hi kids, Uncle Corey here. If you're a little shit ass, watch your fucking mouth because Dawn does some OG shit here. She does. And Missy, unpopular opinion, because she doesn't get touched, Missy gets everything she fucking deserves. If, if she got touched, it went too far. But they said, uh, what, she he, she gets videotaped doing a couple pirouettes. Yeah, and she got McDonald's and stuff. And she got, yeah, she said, they said she had a this better was, time there than she did at home. <laughs> this was the, Love. this was the nicest kid, this was the nicest kidnapping of all time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like somebody gave a note at some point at the studio and was like, hey, you know you're like doing a comedy, right? <laughs> We got to do something else here because this just went like to give me back my son. Yeah. Kind of territory. And that was not a comedy. Other than that line. You went Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street with this abduction. We need to go more like, can Mr. Rogers abduct her? And then like, they play like with Legos and shit. And then he lets her go. Yeah. Like he, he doesn't own a Subway franchise, but... (laughs) He's looking into it. Dawn then goes to Brandon's house to talk, and she sees that his home life is 10 times worse than hers is. His dad is a real piece of shit, and she tells Brandon that she wants to be his girlfriend now, and he lets her know that he's supposed to be going off to juvie, I guess, because we see in we see in the school that the cops come and take him away mm-hmm. for for something. They don't really say what. She mentions that like people have been saying that he's been dealing drugs at the school or whatever. Right. Um, and he's like, no, that's not me. That's my other buddy. He's the he's the drug dealer. Right. Um, so I guess he takes the fall for this, but then he's like, Yeah, I ain't going. I'm running away. 
and then he gets pissed at her because she doesn't want to run away with him. Right. Everybody in this movie runs away to New York, by the way. Yes. Including Don here at the end. Right. So Steve Rogers goes to New York. Brandon goes to New York. And then after this at dinner, Don's mom gets a phone call that the cops found Missy's tutu in Times Square. So Don then hops a bus, goes to New York City to pass out flyers asking about her sister. And she passes out and falls asleep on the street and has this dream that she finds her sister and everyone loves her, but she wakes up and she's just sleeping in the piss-filled streets of New York City. And when she makes the call home, her parents don't even know she's gone. No, her brother answers the phone and she finds, she well, A, she finds out that the cops found Missy mm-hmm. and apparently was at like a family that they knew or whatever. Yeah, it was the next door neighbor. He was like what? keeping her in a cubby hole. Yeah. And underneath their feeding her McDonald's and Skittles and letting yeah. her use letting her have the run of the TV. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. So, and of course, when they're on camera, she's milking it like a motherfucker too. With the mom. <laughs> These motherfuckers. Exactly. So You know what? I have never seen a stronger case for Casey Anthony than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the movie ends. As like they're watching the news, like where the mom and the daughter are being interviewed. Dawn is talking to her brother and her brother basically just says, hey, life gets a little bit better outside of junior high. Like in high school, people talk shit just behind your back, though. And you're just that much closer to college, like gives her a little bit of life advice. But it then transitions to Dawn on a bus with her junior high class going to Disneyland, singing their alma mater, maybe, I guess. Yeah, they're going to it some was... like school event at Disney World, and her mom keeps insisting, like, throughout the movie, she's on the phone with people, like, oh, no, yeah. she's going. Yeah. And you see, like, the permission slip here or there, but they don't really allude to, like, what the event is. If I'm wrong, correct me. Yeah. I know you fucking will. But <laughs> <laughs> they didn't... uh they never really said what it was. It was just some school event. No, but they made mention like this will look good on like a college when you're applying for colleges. And I'm like, going to Disney World is going to be, uh, I, I mean, I guess. OK, like, I don't know if yeah. you're going to play Yaz flute down in uh, Orlando or what the hell's going on. But whatever. Um, all in all, I told you this before we started recording. This reminded me of. Napoleon Dynamite. Mm -hmm. It's so many similarities. If you took out, if you took out a lot of the actual comedy, like I think there was a lot, there was a lot of comedy that was unintentional comedy in this, at least for me, it was more of a dark, dark comedy. Yeah. This was definitely during that era like where uh, Parker Posey was doing a lot of these indie films and a lot of these just weird, dark, yeah. droll kind of movies were coming out. And like the the jokes were all subtext and in the awkwardness and built into that and the yeah. silence and shit like that. Honestly, I was never a fan of those movies. This one, I, I, I did like. I, you know what? I'll be honest. About five, ten minutes in, I was like, I am not going to like this. Like, oh. this is, I, I, I did not go into it with, you know, clear mind and like, you know, like you should when you're trying to review a movie. Right. I, I immediately was like, this is dog shit. By the end, I was, A, I was bought in, and B, I, I, I love dark comedy. Like, so oh, yeah. a, a lot of this stuff made me laugh. But I couldn't get over it, even though I liked the movie, I couldn't get over the the Napoleon dynamite of it all. Like, oh, 100 percent. And I think it's watching Napoleon dynamite and watching it then again and sort of understanding and and watching it a third and fourth time and really finding all the humor in it. Yes. Yes. Helped with doing these types of movies now. Because Absolutely. without that, I would have just been like, what the fuck is the point of this thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if if your favorite movie is like The Expendables, you will not like this movie 
Absolutely. In any way, shape, or yep. form. Yeah. But if, if you like, if you really like to sit down and try and like analyze shit and you like comedy, just broad stroke comedy, yeah. you'll like this movie. Yeah, if you're a if you're a expendables will go on that side. And if you're uh-huh. like if you love like dumb and dumber and anything comedy wise that's smarter than that you don't like, you're not you're not gonna like this. If you're on no. if you're on either sides of those spectrums. Yeah, no. There are not very many dick and fart jokes and the ones that are in here are layered so fucking deep you'll never get yeah, it. Exactly. Exactly. But overall, dude, I, I actually kind of like this movie. And and no, I did. Again, full disclosure, I've never seen this is the first time I've I've seen it. I same. I would like to because and and since you brought uh the whole watching Napoleon Dynamite multiple times. Because mm-hmm. it took me a couple of viewings to really oh, appreciate 100%. Napoleon Dynamite. I think I I would have to watch this at least one to two more times to actually appreciate the entire movie. Oh, I yeah. I think I think this movie would resonate a lot more for anybody that was ever awkward, but especially anyone that was ever awkward and a girl that age. Yeah, like no, absolutely. If you if you had any of Heather's characteristics in this movie of awkwardness. This movie's going to hit hard as fuck. Absolutely. Which she did a great job, by the way. Oh, yeah, she did did a great job because I felt something about all of even fucking Missy. Like, I despise Missy more than I fucking hated Thanos. (laughs) Thanos, I was at least like, hey, may have a point. (laughs) Missy, I'm just like, she's a fucking crazy bitch. So, well, that's how you know the movie's a a good movie, or at least the actors did a good job in the movie, is if you have a feeling about all of them. 100%. So. With that said, um, all of the upcoming requests were we have a living, breathing list. So that'll be yep. down in the description. It'll also be on Twitter uh, with me and Corey. Corey will continue to update that list. I'll continue to retweet it because I don't like to do work. So one click retweet. We're good to go. Um, but yeah, if you want to request a movie again in the description, we have the PayPal link. You can comment with any uh, requests. Obviously, the paid ones we'll do, we'll do first, and then we'll get into all the free ones. So that's all I got. You got anything else? Not a sir. All right. For Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1995's Welcome to the Dollhouse. <laughs>